Even as Super Smash Bros. Ultimate approaches its fourth birthday, character diversity continues to define the top level play. Glitch region this weekend marked the fifth consecutive tournament with at least 400 entrants where there were no repeat mains in top 8. To find such a tournament, you have to go all the way back to Rise and Grind, where Anathema and Zamba both piloted Rob to top 3. That said, the post-lockdown meta is a very different one than the one we left behind in early 2020. It's been just over a year since the return of Majors to North America at Riptide 2021, making it the perfect time to take a look back at how the fates of Smash Ultimate characters have changed for better or for worse. Today, we'll take a deep dive into the post-lockdown history of 10 of the weirdest characters in the Ultimate metagame. Now before we start, let's talk about some of the stats we'll be using throughout the video. The first statistic we'll be focusing on is power ranking usage. Over 100 worldwide power rankings from Smash's most notable regions were compiled, and the data breaks down how many of these rankings each character appears on, as well as how much of the sample player base uses each character. As an example, Palutena is used by 3.4% of all power ranked players from the sample. The other big one we'll be using is placement percentages which weigh character data by their placement at an event adjusted by the scale of that event. While placing well locally can impact things, the most substantial points are given to the best performances at S-tier and A-tier events. Whether each result was international or regional is recorded as well, so we can see if a character does better locally than they do internationally or vice versa. Now, let's get into our first 10 characters, some of the most difficult to pin down across the history of Ultimate's metagame. In early Ultimate, Link was viewed as a top contender and posted some of the best results in the game. By the end of 2019, Link's top main Asami T. Akeda showcased the character's suffocating gameplay with a 5th place finish at SoCal Super Major 2GG Congo Saga and a final rank of 15th in the world for the fall 2019 season. Everything was looking up for the hero of time, but fate would not be so kind. Fast forward to 2022 season and the grim reality emerges that Link didn't really have quite the future people expected. Despite remaining in 21% of sample power rankings for 2022 and despite holding a rough top 40 spot in terms of power ranking representation, all of Link's international data fell off once T entered a hiatus. While the character is far from dead, nearly 40% of Link's results are from the Asia Pacific area with the only massive North American contributor left being Bernie, a West Mexican player ranked in Guadalajara. He sports the biggest individual share of Link's results at nearly 30%, but he is confined to Mexico, which is only just now begin to have frequent major events. The most active Link player in Japan, which contributes a lot of character data, is Rito. But Rito has had issues breaking deep in a bracket and additionally hails from the isolated Hokuriku region, which is 260 miles and a three hour train ride away from Tokyo. For Reis, a hero for both Link and Pit's metagame, the story is similar. Australia is isolated from a lot of active areas in the world, leaving the character data scarce, plummeting from 27th at the end of 2019 to 54th by the end of the PGRU season. There's certainly hope for Link in Ultimate, but many of his mains lack immediate access to majors, resulting in the character's meta stagnating and falling well into the bottom half of the cast. At this point, a T resurgence is the best bet for a quick revival. Outside of Smash 64 and Melee, Jigglypuff has seen little competitive success until 2021. After some developer attention through buffs, we saw Troy, Base Mage Waters, take advantage of Jigglypuff's forward throw and offstage pressure to turn her from a two-time candidate for worst character in the game into a mid-tier powerhouse. Jigglypuff's representation numbers did not boost substantially from 2019 to the first 2022 season, but an unsung achievement by Base Mage and his pilot character is that Jigglypuff rose in spite of a slew of new high and top-tier DLC characters. Another factor keeping her numbers in the 60-70 range is the fact that Base Mage has a near total monopoly of Jigglypuff's results, sporting nearly 90% of the tournament results for the character of the PGRU season. The staggering lack of Jigglypuff players, possibly a consequence of her bottom tier status in prior games, applies to the local level. Among worldwide power rankings, Jigglypuff is present on less than 6% of them, with a minuscule 0.3% of power ranked players utilizing her. It's not uncommon to see characters that are heavily reliant on individual players, but Jigglypuff is an outlier even in those cases, with just two others, Chilean player Breakson and Melee player Hungrybox, accounting for the rest of Jigglypuff's results during the season. Base Mage is the king of the entire character's metagame, showing just how suddenly even the most obscure or irrelevant characters can quickly go to the forefront of character discussions. There is no greater poster child for character meta decline like Angling, ending 2019 near the top 10 with boundless relevancy in the metagame and multiple top level pilots. Inkling entered the post-quarantine era virtually destitute. Dropped by almost all of her top mains, Inkling was left to survive off local and regional results, hoping for a return. While there's not a lot to soften the blow of Inkling's decline from 8th to 43rd, there is some hope for the character. For one, space continues to be a threat in Europe, 
and still uses the character to success, remaining in third place with her across the 2022 season. However, with the Netherlands lacking majors, Space needs to attend majors in other countries to really get data put on the map, which is a disadvantage for the character's visible growth. The good news, Space has attended events in the PGR V4 season like Colossal and Ultimate Wanted 4, placing top 16 back to back. Colorado 8 remains the last bastion of the character in the United States. While the character is relatively common across power rankings, appearing in around 21 to 22% of them, 12 out of 13 Inkling contributors from the 2022 season are non-USA players. This, alongside international impact, was enough to briefly put Inkling in the top 30 during March of 2022, but sadly, it didn't last. Another hopeful for this character in the top contributor this year, even before Maysuma Top 9, is Shiryuki. Earning their spot as the top Kansai player over quarantine, the character remains fairly common in Japan despite an abandonment of her by much of the North American scene. Unsurprisingly, Inkling's good march also featured Shiryuki and Colorado 8's best performances, which were both top three placements at regional events Sumabato SP23 and the Zoo 3. With nearly half of all Inkling's results being owed to just three players, any further drop will be devastating. But as things stand, Inkling has just settled into the middle of the pack. As new characters in the metagame rise, some must fall. While warning size existed long before the 2022 season for characters like Inkling, Zero Suit Samus has seen a staggering collapse in metagame relevancy since the end of 2019 that was very hard to predict. After a successful fall 2019 season ending with Mars, Choco, and Kuro in the top 30, rankings since have only left Mars hovering in the top 30. A brief examination of where her results come from showed that a lot of her most prevalent mains are simply inactive or have dropped her entirely. Expected new contributors like Shiki have done damage in other post-quarantine periods, but its contributions to this season were fairly mum at 2.4%. Kuro has largely dropped Zero Suit Samus, a huge blow to the character considering Kuro was a major winner with her. Choco, on the other hand, remains a devout main of the character, but he hasn't been peaking quite as high as he did in 2019. While far from irrelevant, her drop from 8th to 39th in results has been fueled by a larger shift away from the character in North America and Japan, her best mains peaking less, and fewer new mains making up the difference. In order to recover, Zero Suit would need her existing mains to peak higher in upstart mains like Doorstop, Shu, and Kali to start tearing up brackets. A top main from Europe would also help quite a bit, considering C-tier or higher contributions from the fall 2019 season like any Zero Suit players from Europe. Something else that might help, a sudden major win over the course of this video's production by none other than our very own content creator, Mars! Sora's lack of success in North America has become the stuff of legend. There's an entire Twitter account dedicated to logging Sora's poor track record as a last-ditch effort pick for top players, something I like to call the Sora Render. Funnily enough, Meister, who has seen the closest thing to success in North America with Sora, is third in contributions for the character in the 2022 season. Sora is at least somewhat popular regionally, and did see success from Zachary at Kagaribi 7 as a solo pick mere days after release. But things have been quiet for the Keyblade-wielding hero, sitting at 46 for the first half of the year. While slightly higher in regional cross tabs, he peaks at just 40 there. Even though North America has largely discarded the character, Japan has a near monopoly on his solo results. Sora's results that do exist largely are in Japan, sitting at 67.2% of all of Sora's character contributions for 2022. Kamame has seen extended success with the character. After returning to the game with a bit of a character crisis, Kamame has since given Sora his best results after Zachary's one-hit wonder with the character back in November 2021. He has three fifth place finishes split between Kagaribi 6 and Meisuma Top 7 and 8, giving a consistent stream of serious wins. This all came to a head in the PGR V4 season where Kamehameha successfully defeated top North American players Zamba, Jake, and Sonics in an extended loser's run to second place at Glitch Region, making Kamehameha the first solo Sora player to have wins across two of the strongest countries in Smash Ultimate. An unlikely runner-up is Smash 4 Wii U legend Komorikiri, who remains a common sight at the Sumabato series where he's become increasingly successful after picking the character up. His Sora runner-up contributions accounting for 15.4% of the results with his best run probably being a 4th place finish at Sumabato SP27. With Kamehameha having traveled and proven the character's proficiency, there are endless possibilities for Fighter Pass 2's most long discarded character. We'll get yet more data soon as Kamehameha is slated to enter the Big House 10 next weekend. Smash's favorite green dinosaur and tax evader is finally seeing some time in the competitive spotlight after endless struggles in Brawl and Wii U. While the character was immediately impactful in early Ultimate, with Suarez making the top 50 in the 2019 spring season, the best was yet to come. Subsequent success for Mei Mei and Ron would demonstrate a broader international appeal for the character by late 2019, 
With Wi-Fi events becoming a harbinger of later success, Yoshidora performing consistently well on Smash Mate as well as a handful of Sumibato events in 2020 seemed to be a clear indicator that he and the character had big things to show once events returned. By 2022, the season closed with Yoshidora taking Kansai Major Event in Meisuma Top 8, making it the first time we've seen a major win from a Yoshi player in a non-64 Smash title. Unsurprisingly, Yoshidora leads Yoshi's contributions at over 33% becoming the definitive best player of the character. Suarez, having made the top 50 in early 2019, has become more relevant as of late. Sporting a number of solid performances at majors, Suarez managed to hold the second best contributions for the character at 20%. While he does have high peaks, Yoshi has dropped a bit, from 20 to 29th, possibly a result of former top contributors like Mei Mei and Ron becoming less active. While popular in both North America and Japan, the character has an issue with representation in Europe. Blue Sky does hold a third place position in contributions, but the gap between him and Suarez, about 13%, is pretty big. Blue Sky is also just one of two Europeans putting up big results for the character in the first half of 2022. Despite a bit of stagnation, Yoshi is still well positioned to be a meta-defining character and is something top players will have to be on the watch for going forward. The Miis have had an odd and sometimes troubled history in Smash. They had contested legality issues in Wii U and suffered from a lack of player base, leaving them as an especially late de facto newcomers when Ultimate rolled around. While all the Miis have seen some play and some use in the game, Brawler stands out as the most successful offline Mii. Raizasu put the character on the map in 2020 at Misuma Top 4, but the character has persisted since. After a dismal 68 out of 75th showing in late 2019, Brawler moved up to 63rd out of 83. While not the craziest increase, it shows that the character has increased relevancy despite a wealth of new top players and buff characters that had fan bases clamoring to use them. A pretty interesting fact is that over 80% of Mii Brawler's results from the first half of 2022 came from the players hailing from either the state of Florida or the region of Kansai. People are obviously familiar with Isam and Raizasu's contributions to the character, but an unsung notable that plays second in contributions for the first half of 2022 is Multimane Injelly. He plays a combo of Wii Fit Trainer, Young Link, and Mii Brawler to reasonable success, being a common sight in top cuts at Sumabato and Meisuma events. We also saw quiet, but still important contributions from Juan P and J Mafia, which is where a bulk of the character's Florida-based data comes from. Still a bit of an experimental character piloted in tandem with others, Me Brawler has a shaky future after resisting irrelevancy. It remains to be seen if he will continue to be a popular secondary, though a recent PGR V4 season resulting glitch regen from Slashy might show the character remains a viable pickup for up-and-coming players. Mega Man has seen an often undiscussed decline in the metagame. Ending off 2019 in a strong position, he since plummeted from 16th in results to a middling 38th. His popularity has also taken an even bigger dive regionally, sitting at 47th on regional results and used by less than 1% of power ranked players. What's the cause? Eh, kinda hard to say. A big driver of Mega Man's results from the pre-quarantine era was Kamen Man, who has since expanded his character pool, lowering his share of Mega Man contributions. For the first half of 2022, and for the first time ever, an American leads the pack with Peanut holding just over 25% of the character's results. Trim comes in second, leading Europe's charge with the character. Kamame and Repo share third and fourth, having about 15% each between them. Here, an interesting fact comes to a head. A very small number of players hold the majority of Mega Man's results, with the top five holding about 75% of the character's results. Despite having notables across the three biggest areas in Smash Ultimate, the character seems to simply have lost a lot of his pre-quarantine player base. With top mains also splitting characters, it seems like Mega Man is simply a victim of the metagame's development in a post-patch and post-DLC world. Not everything is bad news though. The aforementioned Repo has been gaining steam in Japan and ended up being a top 50 player in Japan this year, and MPG is a recent threat in Tri-State that managed to beat Zamba at a sizable Tri-State regional. Peebnut in particular has seen a recent success in the PGR V4 season. Utilizing Crash Bomber and Riptide to pressure opponents, he might be showing meta development the character might need to keep up. Ryu and Ken are part of the Shoto archetype, a carryover from traditional fighting games with unique mechanics that make them similar to their FGC counterparts. The characters have attracted large fan bases from day one. However, going into Ultimate, Ryu started off on a bad foot, barely scraping into the top 60 by the end of 2019. Ken, while not wildly successful, was certainly more used and saw better consistent results across the board. The only signs of hope with Ryu seem to be with early 2020 performances with the character by Moonkin. Rising up around the same time, Asimo took Japan by storm, hailing from an obscure region of Japan and quickly taking both Japan and the USA by storm at events like Kagaribi 7 and the Invitational. Aiken, on the other hand, represented a new day in the sun for Chicago with his famed run at Genesis 8, which he discusses right here. The three of them account for nearly two-thirds of all of Ryu's results, 
with much of the rest being secondary split usage from Ken mains, which similarly had a really good year. While slightly lower on the list than in 2019, at 37th instead of 31st, the character has had much better peaks, seeing big results from Georgia in particular between Vendetta and Jazo. Ken continues to have a larger player base, with about 1.1% of power ranked players using Ken versus just 0.8% of Ryu players. Neither of them are super common on power rankings, but Ken appears on roughly a fifth of them compared to Ryu appearing on just under 15% of them. Ryu and Ken are much closer in 2022 than they were in 2019 in terms of data, with a lot of their results being shared. When it comes to peaks, each of them have a distinctive set of mains that have shown both characters are highly viable. Thanks for watching everybody, it's been TK Breezy and I only have one thing to show this time, it's just my Twitch. Please come over to twitch.tv slash TK Breezy and hang out with me when I'm streaming. It's a great time, we play a lot of games, we talk about a lot of games, and just kind of world stuff anyway. So if you want to talk about things, talk about it with me. I'll catch you next time, peace!